So I just want people to be more responsible about yeah. what they say. Yeah. And so I don't want to just minimize that and go, oh, well, it's no big deal. No, it is a big deal. Because here you are, you're, like I said, just by profession, you're more behind the scenes. And you went instantly from behind the scenes, straight thrusted into the public light uh, and partnered with a superstar. And now they're picking you apart as if you're not worthy to be married to this person. I just feel like everybody should have sent some oil for my feet and stuff like that. They didn't have to talk about me. They could just say, hey, her edges don't look good. Send me some jail. But don't. <laughs> Love is a treasure chest. But once opened, our hearts become vulnerable. I, I went back to Vegas. It was this guy. He appeared as a friend. Sure enough, it led to infidelity. Alignment can't be ignored. We talked about certain topics for as having kids. She didn't want to have kids. Um, and that was one of the red flags. And I know you desire marriage, so I think it's best you move on with your life. What you do, know, Lisa? What you do? I told him, okay. <laughs> she didn't ask me why. I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. I've, I watched their videos of them having sex, so I would try to imitate that. No discussion is off limits. Dear Future Wifey Podcast brings healing. You inspire us to try God a little bit more. Up and through this platform, I have realized that it's possible. It's possible to love again. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. Season 7 is all about tough topics. I'm Lateris R. Winfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Winfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can I get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, we're still in season seven, Tough Topics, and, you know, y'all been rocking with us. You know, a lot of times when we're doing some of these episodes, we had certain guests on here that you were like, oh, my God, why'd you bring him on here or whatnot? But it's because we want to have a safe space for people to share their truths and in hopes if you have an open mind, you can glean wisdom and insight and learn something from those guests, even if you don't agree with their thought processes. That's what Tough Topics is all about, is to talk about those taboo subject matters that we are afraid to address. Uh, today's episode, I don't know, it'll probably be a little lighthearted. We're going to have a little fun. Um, you know what? This guest needs no introduction. You know who she is. Matter of fact, uh, we're going to introduce this amazing book that she's written where she's vulnerably sharing her story about her life. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, my new homie, Tamika Foster. Thank you for having me. Or do you go by Tamika Foster or Tamika Foster Raymond? Everything. Which one? I go which by one? all of them. Which one want me to call you? Really, I go by Tamika Raymond, but right. to social media, I'm Tamika Foster. Okay, because I noticed that on your social media is Tamika Foster, but we're gonna say Tamika Foster. Yeah, Raymond. they was they they was waterboard me about my last name once oh. I got divorced. <laughs> Get what? rid of it. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so why is he that? don't want you no more? Oh, why, why? I'm like, dang. I'm like, geez. All right, give so, it to the social media people. So why? So why? Why? Why do you hold on to the last name? Well, I'm not holding on. It's just my kids. My kids yeah. are in school. It's so weird. Miss, uh, they don't even know what last name to say. And so I just like, you know what? Let's just keep it consistent with the kids. He's my former husband, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You said, you you told me something in our pre-interview that I found interesting and I could uh, understand. What did you say about uh, typically when you do interviews like this, the subject matter? I ask him, I ask you specifically not to talk about my ex-husband. Right. I was like, please. But I realized that I probably won't be here if you're not going to talk about my ex. <laughs> well, how I got got here. So, yeah. Well, listen. No, the interesting it. thing about it is, of course, that's you know you highly successful in your own right. Um, but you were more behind the scenes as a as a stylist or whatnot. So the people in the industry knew who you were. Yeah. But you know the common people began to be aware of who you are based upon who you married. And so that's 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 fair, ain't it? Not really, but that's... Tell me why not. Because it's just, you know, I think when he does press and he has to do interviews, he can talk about whatever he's currently working on. Like, hey, I'm in Vegas or I'm doing this. I'm in Paris. I'm at Fashion Week. You know, me, they won't... And if they... And he, the publicist will lead and say, do not talk about his ex-wife. I'm sure that's what happens. I don't know for a fact, but I would imagine. And they don't ask him. But me, <laughs> that's the first question. So, what's Usher thinking right now? <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking right now. I'm like, 
Damn. I threw a joke at you. I said, um, you don't want to talk about him. But what's the name of your book? Leave me alone. No, what's the name of the book? Here I Stand. You know, it sounds like an Usher album. That's what it sounds like to me, right? It is, but guess what? There's more things called Here I Stand, and there's more people standing than when he said it. Like, <laughs> people still just, it's a lot of people standing up, a lot of stand-up people in the world. <laughs> Sly and the Family Stone got a song called Stand. There's a lot of standing. Like, come on. So, why, so why'd you name the book that? I'm still standing. Ain't that Billy Joe? Like, people still like. He said people still standing. He ain't the only one that's standing. He's the only one standing. Like, why, why, why'd you name the book Here I Stand? Actually, it does have a double entendre. Yeah. You know, there was an album in 2008 that came out, and it was dedicated to me. Uh, it most, was. Most, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, yeah, and it's called Here I Stand. So, of course, it's, it's kind of about the testament to that love, because that's a story that's in my book. But more importantly, I've been through just life and life be life and yeah, and I'm still standing. And it's here I stand in a beautiful state. That's good. So it's not just here I stand in a beautiful state. Yes. What is this beautiful state that you're still standing in? Well, when I went to India, this is when I learned this terminology. When I went to India, um, I learned about remaining in a beautiful state. In life, you have two states of being. You can choose to suffer. You can be in a suffering state or a beautiful state. So I choose to be in a beautiful state. Suffering is if you just hold on and dwell on things that are just negative in your mind. And me, I choose to find the good. That's good. That's good. Have mm -hmm. you always been like that? Always looking oh, for no. the... Oh, no. Well, you you were mm -mm. more negative or something? I think so. I think the glass was probably half empty, more <laughs> than half full. You yeah. know what I mean? I just... I'm, number one, I'm from Oakland. We are a little aggressive Especially the women, just, just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We tend I, to be I, a I little aggressive. From Oakland, yeah. They've gotten more aggressive than when I was there. <laughs> I'll say that. But no, seriously, I think it's just there's a defense mechanism. We're a little tough. Yeah. And the women tend to not be as soft as they should be. They're not in their soft life. Yeah. Um, I had to. This is all learned behavior. I had to learn it. Trust me. I had to learn how to meditate. Learn how to take a pregnancy pause. How to take a beat before responding? Yeah, um, I'm still working on that one. Not. <laughs> that's still, that's I think still we all need some help. I know I need some help in that. I, I, I'll pop off real quick if you if you if Man. you touch me in a certain way, or disrespect me. I feel like if I, I feel respond. disrespected yeah. or if I feel hurt, my defense mechanism is just to pop off. Boom. Yeah. And yeah. then people either love me or they really really hate me. It's one or the other. But the people that hate me have no good reason. You feel like that's a strong word. You feel like they really hate you, or just no? They don't, because you know they're confused admirers. <laughs> confused admirers. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's what your haters are. Confused admirers. Yes, the people who really hate you, who really don't like you, have a strong disdain. They ignore you, and they're indifferent about your presence. They just don't care. People that have enough energy, enough vitriol to, to write and type mean comments, or to say hateful things, they actually are confused, admire. They admire something about you. They just can't control it. They can't figure it out. I like that. They did just confused. I like that. Poor that makes things. all the sense in the world. Yeah, it's the truth. One of the biggest things I asked you, what could this conversation be about? And we're going to talk about a lot about you because just talking on the phone with you during the pre-interview, I was like, this is a fascinating woman. I love how witty you are. I don't know if people know how silly you are. You are a complete fool. So <laughs> hopefully people get a chance to see that in this don't interview. Don't be telling them all no, that. We're gonna, no, I want them to see all that. I want, I want them to see all that. I want you to just show a side of you that uh, makes people understand why some of the men that have fallen in love with you fell in love with you. I think that's important. Um, um, and I tell you said this was a Christian show. Oh, it's a Christian oh, show. Okay. I mean, we we talk about it all. <laughs> the marriage bed is undefiled. Come on, somebody. So uh, yeah, if you if you got that secret sauce, and that's just what it is. They just need to understand that Tamika got that sauce, and that's just what that is, huh? Because <laughs> you said. That. <laughs> Look, she's gonna try to be. She's gonna try to be quiet now. Uh huh. Don't don't hide now. Don't be bashful now. <laughs> we said. I said, what should this conversation be about? One of the biggest things that people attacked you. You had no, no fault of your own was age. We're going to call this episode The Age Factor. I think that's good. Yeah, you, I know you thought it was good because you came up with the title. Whatever. Yeah, so listen. So it's The Age Factor, and um, you had an age difference of eight years from your ex-spouse, correct? I say 7.5 <laughs> <laughs> because he's... 
Yeah, okay. So yeah. seven point five. Not quite. Yeah, all right. not all the way. So seven yeah. months, five, uh, seven years, about five months. All right. Yeah. So why do you think people attack you so much about the age difference? When you look back, hindsight being twenty twenty, is that a huge gap from a woman to a man? Nowadays, now see, I think it's all about timing, right? And I, I, I remember telling him back then, is you got to let these people catch up. They got to catch up because he was kind of a forerunner. Yeah. Or, uh, or he had, I'm sorry, an outlier. Yeah. You know, he was like the first kind of big name guy to get married. This is before, you know, we had Justin Timberlake got married yeah. and, and Jay, Nick Cannon and J&B and, uh, and Nick Cannon. Yeah. We got married first. Yeah. So he was the first heartthrob type guy that got married um, publicly and the fans just weren't with it because these fans are young girls that got his posters all over the room. Yep. Yep. So they was like, we hate him now. Mom, tear up those tickets and she's ugly. <laughs> just mad at me. I was just like, I, I, you know. But um, I just think it was a, it, it became such a big topic and conversation. And I think once, and this is the thing, you know, the blogs all kind of copy their, they kind of got copycat crimes. Of course. So once call you old and ugly, then another one like, old and ugly. That's a good one. We yep. like that. That's yep. the title. Yeah. So I became that across the board. All the time. And then they found the most unflattering. Like, when we would go out, the paparazzi would just wait until I was chewing. So I'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, really? You couldn't get a dimple shot? You couldn't get, like, they always get me with a crab leg. I'm in the picture like, I'm like, damn. So the paparazzi picture didn't help. The other fact is that I was pregnant, you know. So I was pregnant when people didn't know I was pregnant. So oh, I was wow. swollen. Nose wow. all crazy, lips dry on every picture. I'm like, damn, they got me with ashy feet, bad skin. I don't know. Yeah, so I just I didn't have a chance. I didn't have a chance in the public eye, but it's all good. Did you? I know you couldn't expect that. Like, here you I, are just doing from this. From Oakland. I'm just regular. We ain't even got to have our family even got a damn camera, much less Papa Ross. <laughs> And paparazzi had long lens angles that come from the kitchen to the. I was like, where did they take that picture from? They were getting me from rooftops, parking lots. Really? Oh, I was on the beach. I don't know if they were in a hotel down the street. They got me. I was just like, damn, how did they find that? It was funny. I'm telling you. How did you, you process that? So people don't really understand oh, how people are processing that information. Most people are on this earth today. We can get behind a computer, get behind our cell phones and type. Yeah, you Thumb know, and, and and go off on somebody. But if we would ever trade places with those individuals, we'll be suicidal. You'd be bad. So how sometimes did, how you're did you rushing. Talk? And I was in a very rushed lifestyle. Yeah. Number one, I was pregnant. So I didn't feel good half the time. Number two, I was his stylist. So I was still working. I was yeah. still putting looks together and figuring it out. Number three, we had a flight every other minute, it seemed yeah. like. Number four, I did not feel like oiling my feet all the time. I don't know if they oiled now. I don't know. That was something I just... To make you, you can't cuss to make it. Oops, yeah. sorry. I didn't say that. Did I say... I said shoot. Oh. <laughs> Bleep. I told I gave I gave Tamika a disclaimer. I said, "Can you can you uh not curse?" I said, "Can we crack jokes and not curse?" And what you say? Don't rush. I don't know. I just said, <laughs> "You're right." No, you didn't. You said something about Kevin Hart. You quoted a Kevin Hart line or something. Nigga, Kevin Hart, he can't listen. He's the same way. He's funny, but he's just, I don't know. We slip. All right, that's it. I love it. I love Last it. Last one. I love it. So so you said so you said that. Um, you're being rushed. So you were still working at the time. I was working. I'm, I was also a mother. I had three children when we started. So I was a mother. That's another thing they were tripping out. They oh, they were like, mad at that. You said you got three kids pregnant with another one. Well, they didn't know y'all was pregnant. I wasn't pregnant. I wasn't pregnant yet. No, they didn't I know wasn't that. pregnant when I got engaged. So that's the other myth. They thought that he married me you was because pregnant. I was pregnant and I wasn't. I got engaged and I got pregnant like three or four months later. So if they do the math... My son's born in November at the end. So I was pregnant like in March. He proposed in January. It's just different months. But anyway, that yeah. said, that said, I wasn't very, I wasn't publicly liked. I wasn't accepted. It's all good. I don't care. But you can't say all good because I want people to understand. It's over. No, I want oh. people to be responsible because it's other people that's in the limelight. It's other people that didn't that they're doing their life. They're 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 doing life they the best way they know anything how. Anything in today's world. No, they want, don't. It's people that be suicidal. It's people jump. It, it, it's it's a lot. And I know a lot of. So I have a lot of celebrity friends that when certain stuff hits the you know the social media oh, streets and them. then they people weighing in, especially people coming on podcasts. They're being vulnerable. They're sharing their truths. Yeah. And then people just. 
attacking them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I didn't know that y'all going to pick apart everything that I say. Oh, man. So I just want people to be more responsible about yeah. what they say. Yeah. And so I don't want to just minimize that and go, oh, well, it's no big deal. No, it is a big deal. Because here you are, you're, like I said, just by profession, you're more behind the scenes. And you went instantly from behind the scenes, straight thrusted into the public light uh, and partnered with a superstar and now they're picking you apart as if you're not worthy to be married to this person. I just feel like everybody should have sent some oil for my feet and stuff like that. They didn't have to talk about me. They could just say, hey, her edges don't look good. Send me some jail. But don't. <laughs> they were so mean. It didn't make no sense. But look, I got PTSD. I'm fine now, but I really... I really don't. Why are you bringing it up? Because I want God. people to understand this. Because I'm telling that's you, that's not what my so book mean. is about, by the way. See, it's, people are so mean, and that's what I want to talk about. People are so mean, and they are thumb thugs because the same people that make those comments will run into me in the airport and, and beg for a picture. picture. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're so pretty in person. La la la. You look like a Barbie doll. That ain't what you said on the <laughs> under the pseudo. But you got to realize, yeah. hurt people hurt people. Facts. They are miserable. Yeah. So if you have time in your day to sit and come up with a fake profile, because yep. a lot of them got a name, I don't know. Yeah, it'd be fake profiles. Yeah, they somewhere in Wisconsin waiting on a hot pocket, <laughs> mad at me, mad at their life, mad at their thighs. I say that in my book. They mad at their whole existence. Don't have a husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, nothing. And they mad at me because I'm over here. Catching a flight, you know. What to mean? Make a, so, so they waiting on a hot pocket. They waiting on a hot pocket. I said it in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that the thumb thugs be always waiting on a hot pocket. They always wait on a hot pocket. That's just a part of what they it, do to get it out the back away. It's the, it's the starter kit. It's the, it's the, it's the it's starter the, kit for the, the, the internet th terrorist starter kit. You gotta be waiting on a hot pocket. You gotta be in some random city when you ain't seen daylight in a few days. You gotta be in the basement of your mama's house. It's, it's a whole little thing about these bloggers, man. You said it's a starter kid. These haters, they were the haters. They somewhere lowly. And so, how did you? Uh, let's transition. How did you protect your mental health as you was going through that? I flew to Brazil and decided, decided to try to uh, have uh, plastic surgery. Really? I tried to get liposuction and died. So you tell me the first time. So you never felt. Insecure about your appearance until that happened. Absolutely, never, never. I was, I was a, a Oakland star. I was a legend in my town. You know what I mean? Like I was. I'm being serious though. Yeah. I, I never in high school. All the boys liked me in high school. Um, the other schools boys liked me. Like I never had a problem with anybody saying, "Oh, she's ugly." Like they might say they don't like a feature or. I don't know what, but yeah, no, I've never heard anything like this. So. It took me really by. I had to go look in the mirror and be like, who are they talking? What? <laughs> then you start looking at yourself like, well, And you start picking yourself that apart. That is ugly. Yeah, you start you picking yourself apart. Your chin is long. I mean, you start picking yourself apart. You really do. Um, and that's what I want to address. I want to address that level of responsibility. We all are responsible. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Absolutely. And they that love it eat the fruit thereof. So that means that if I'm always uh, spewing venom out of my mouth, mm -hmm. destroying people, picking people apart, God's not pleased with me if I'm doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, um, and as earlier, you were just, oh, I just, it was no big deal. I just blah, blah. But no, it started planting those seeds in your heart. You start looking at people. You start looking at, okay, maybe his ex looked like this or maybe this. And you start disqualifying yourself from what he already qualified you for. Right. We do that with God. We do that with God. God is qualifying us for certain positions in our life. He's qualifying us for certain jobs, occupations, for certain moves that he wants. Mm -hmm. But then we look at ourselves and say, man, I come from this type of background, I, I mean, that's that's too good for me. I can't live in that house, you know. I, I mean, I come from from the hood, you know. Right. My, my my parents never would. I can't have this job. I never even graduated college, you know. We start picking ourselves apart when God is qualifying us sure. for the next level. Sure. And so here you are in Brazil getting work done. Well, I didn't get anything done because when I got with the anesthesiologist. I was, supposed to, I was supposed to have a little liposuction. Not nothing serious. Not a tummy tuck. Not a facelift. <laughs> not right, a well. sex change like they said. <laughs> they said you had sex change. Oh, they said I was a man. I was a man the whole time, too. Oh, God, And no. I just didn't understand how I was having all these babies. I was, <laughs> I was like, I'm a man, but I'm due to give birth next week. So what is 
<laughs> so I'm due to get burnt. This doesn't work. This does not work with what God told me about myself, <laughs> about physics. But nowadays, though, uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. all could be true. So I'm so confused. You was so, ahead of your time. You was ahead oh, of your yeah, time. I was ahead of my time being a man and having a kid. I was like, maybe they were right. They was on to something. These people were prophesying what was happening in the world. But the truth of the matter is, everything that my doctors told me, Shout out to Dr. Jackie Walters. <laughs> I was female. That's what I was told. That's so, what you told. That's what they told my mama, too. That's what told your mama. So that's not what they told the blog. So they yeah. were hating on me. They said, she looks like a man. What's he doing with that old lady? You know, it was just crazy. But anyway, so I go to Brazil. I wanted to have simple liposuction because I had just had a baby. I had a little pudge. And I was like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to be snatched when I get back home. Yeah, snatched her, right? Snatched the life out of me. Really? I literally um, went with the anesthesiologist. He had me count backwards, and I flatlined. So the doctor never did any surgery. None of that happened. I flatlined. Yeah. See, I can't tell the whole book. Nope, nope. That's no, the last that's, thing get, gonna, that's the last This nugget. is going to make them want to get the book. Okay, then they got to see what happened after but that. But you got to understand, too, my 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 uh, viewers love reading. Oh, do so they? So that's why everybody comes. Come I on, get, readers. I get... Publishers pitching their authors for my podcast. Of course, really? I only I, I choose probably one percent of them oh, because nice. the story has to resonate with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the podcast though it can be great promotion for somebody. My my uh, viewers love the authenticity of the guests. Yeah, yeah. And so when they love you, they just buy everything you got. You know, they okay. go to your website, and be like, oh, she got some some head wraps. I'm gonna buy that too. That's you sweet. know what I'm saying. That's they nice. just they just they they I call it the dear future wifey effect. The oh. people just people like ah, you got some of the most amazing viewers ever they just That's they'll come start cool. following you start dming you talking about certain points in the podcast that resonated with them yeah good. and then you'll just build a whole community out of the uh the dear future wifey um i call it the lit fam okay. the lit fam we live intentionally and transparently so listen it. so so all right we're gonna deviate from that and so now you all gonna tell the whole book we can't we're gonna tell the whole book we're gonna tell the whole book but so i will you say i was line. insecure i you was, was insecure i was insecure i went to brazil i was trying to prove a point i was trying to come back a new, and I came back a dead. It was not good. It was not in a flat line, dead to the bed. God <laughs> saw something different for me, though. He wanted me here. So I woke up, and, um, you know, I woke up and just realized I was majorly tripping. Yeah. You know, and I really just wanted liposuction. I wasn't getting anything like serious, like reconstructive. Yeah. Bandaged up kind of surgery. Actually, yeah. They were like, "Oh, you rest for three days. You'll be okay to take your flight back to America. You'll be no. I wasn't getting a BBL. I wasn't getting the. I don't know what else. Tummy tuck <laughs> or boobs or nothing. No, all that other stuff. And so, yeah, it didn't. It didn't work as planned. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a rude awakening. Literally, it was a rude awakening. I should say. And you'll read why it was a rude awakening in the book. You'll see what that was. But I'm so happy. I'm delivered. You been know? delivered with an RT. Been delivered. Delivered. Yeah. When you look at, I was um, when you think about age, do you think that there's a certain age gap that people should be safe within? Like you say, let's say about women. What What is the age range you date now? Let me say this before we go to my dating. I would not want to be 30, 25, not even 40. I am so. I love my age so much. Like, I always tell, like, my friends laugh because I always say, I'm old. I am old. They be like, you are not. I'd be like, I'd rather say I'm old than to be young because young is di a disappointing culture right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That is a lost species of humans. They are aimless. They're not super sharp. They don't, they don't know what I knew at 30. These people don't know a damn thing. <laughs> they don't know. They rely on every. They rely on all electronics for everything. <laughs> I write notes the old school way in a, I got about 15 notebooks. I, you know, I just, I just think this whole age of everything being on computers and stuff, I just feel like this is a loss. They don't know how to do anything. They really well, wouldn't well, be able to do anything. One thing that they've lost most of is just human contact and interaction. You know, it's yes. like, yeah, it's just, you they put them in a room, no personality. When you, you get them around each other, they'll they'll sit. They'd be and, in the party just looking at their phone. Yeah, the at whole a time. Party. At like, a party. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm up there dancing and sweating like, <laughs> what y'all? Give me some water, somebody, please. What? They sitting on the phone the they whole time. They be on the just, phone or taking a selfie. I'm like, why did you come? Yeah. Why did you come if you're going to be on your phone? This, I'm telling you, I am an older woman. I am seasoned. 
I love my age. I'm just, I just have a different kind of freedom that I didn't have at, at 30. I was so caught up on what people thought and trying to figure out, I guess it was uh, imposter syndrome. I yeah, had it so bad. Yeah. And then when I was married, I had imposter syndrome. I didn't believe I belonged where I was. Mm. And that's probably why I'm not there. I, I don't think I was confident enough. I know it wasn't. And I, um, I didn't know how to live it. And he even said it in an interview. Once I think he was with Oprah. I didn't know how to be his wife. I didn't know what it took, and so. And when you hindsight been twenty twenty, what did, what did he mean by that? When you he was right. That? I was I was tripping. I was I was because I had a lot of stuff in my head, and I was talking my. Um, you know, you just talk to yourself and give yourself all these false narratives, and if you overthink, I was definitely an overthinker. I still am, but yeah, I was tripping. Were you the type that was very accusatory or something? Oh man, what <laughs> you did. <laughs> Kiss the male woman. I saw you get in the mail and you kissed her. He was like, I was just telling her to hide the flowers for you. Like, <laughs> I was telling her. Yeah, I used to mess up surprises. I would be tripping. You used to I, mess up surprises? Oh, God. I was the surprise ruiner. Because you couldn't surprise me because I want to check to see what the hell was the surprise. And it was for me with my name. And I'd be like, yeah. Surprise myself. Put it back. Put it, just put it back. back and I'm going to pretend. I didn't that. see it. I'm going to pretend. No. So you was a snooper. I was a snooper, yeah. yeah. I was tripping. So my book, though, what I like about my book is that I talk about, I guess I am giving a little bit of life tips. Yeah. And I, I learned from my different mistakes and travesties, so to speak. I'm, you said forget mistakes, they travesties. They were travesties, <laughs> yes. I, I But I learned from them. I did. I learned. I grew a lot. Um there are some things that you never get over, like losing my son. I speak about that. Um, you learn to live around it. it become, How many years ago was that? It was in 2012. So we are about to be at 11. It's 10 years. Oh, no, we're at 11 years. Yeah. This year was 11 years. It feels like three years, though, for me. It's just, even though time is moving really fast, um, it just feels like it's fresh, you know, because that's yeah. my son. So I sometimes I just see his face. I can be doing the most random thing and it just, I just, I'll look up and, or like a little boy, I'll hear him talk and I'll kind of look over and he'll sound just like him. You know, my real estate agent right now has a son and he was in the background asking her for something to eat, like order me some cheddar bay biscuits and da, da, da. he sounded so much like my son. I had to pause. I said, your son sounds exactly like Kyle and he has the same kind of um, cadence in his voice. Yeah, so I'm going to use him for my cartoon. I'm doing an animated project. I love so, it. Well, listen, you definitely have my condolences on that, but I want people to understand what happened with your son. How old was he? Uh, let's talk about that. My son was 11. Um, his name was Kyle Ishmael Glover. He passed away at age 11. He was in a boating accident. He was with family. I wasn't there. Um, I was actually out of the country at a wedding when it happened or on a wedding trip. And, um, yeah, he passed away at a lake called Lake Lanier, which I have a huge petition. Everybody sign change.org, Lake Lanier. It says drain Lake Lanier, but the idea is to excavate it, clean it, survey it, and make it a more safe place um, for people that, that like to participate. But I won't ever go. It's a man-made lake. Yeah, it's a man-made lake built on top of a black Oscarville. town. Yeah, a black town. And so it's all these rumors where they feel like uh, spirits are pulling people down in the it's water. Possible. Or just the way the, the it was built on this town, it has whatever it is where it is. It's, people can feel it when they get in that lake. They, they say that they feel somebody pulling on them. You finish like you start, right? Yeah. So they started wrong. It started wrong. It wasn't on the right didn't have the right intentions right. the way that they built the lake. So all the problems that they're having are probably in correlation with running the— African Americans away back the, then. The African Americans had a thriving community. Yep. They had churches and businesses. Yep. These are probably recently freed slaves, yep. I would imagine, um, who were building their family and their life. And land was taken. It yep. was just stolen from them. And they yep. had to go and figure it out. Yep. They didn't give them like a contingency plan. Nope. It was like, bye. Yep. <laughs> so the lake since has had se over 700 deaths. One weekend had three deaths in one weekend. Man, one a man weekend. fell in the water and got electrocuted. How do you get electrocuted in a lake? Somebody explained to me. Yeah, no. 
it's it is um the lake. So I the petition is for changes to happen. Um, I don't want to completely drain it because it is a source of water in Georgia. It's hydroelectricity that they use, you know. So obviously it's utilitarian as well. But the recreational part of it, they need to make some changes. They need to change the name, number one. Sydney Lanier was a Confederate, you know. Mm -hmm. We already know the history. I say call it Lake Kyle. Doesn't that sound good? She said, rename it after my son. That's what I'm talking about. Lake Kyle. It just has a ring to it. She said, we're going to do it. Let's go all the way. I didn't even add that to it yet, but <laughs> let's add that to the petition. Lake Kyle. But no, but truthfully, I want them to create some Kyle markers where it shows the more dangerous parts of the lake. Maybe Good. there's a sinkhole or maybe this is it. Uh, they have trees growing in the middle of the lake. So the areas where they got buildings, if they don't want to take the buildings out, can you mark that area and put buoys around it so that people can't get near it or so that people's boats aren't changing direction? The undercurrent is pulling people down. It's just awful. So that's a— um, So what, 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 what have you heard? Have people—have they responded? Have you been in talks with the people? That's controlled by what the city of— uh, No, that's actually um, Army Corps. The uh, Army Corps of Engineers um, control it. And I have a, a feeling that uh, Georgia Power has a lot to do with it yeah. because it's hydroelectricity. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like a silent partner or something, yeah. you know. Um, I have not gotten the response that I hope for. Um, so, you know, I plan to turn it up a notch. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm being, you know, I'm slow to, you know, how they say, measure twice, cut once. There it is. Okay. There it is. Okay. So this is 11 years later. 11 years later. How did you deal with... A loss like that, that's huge. And I heard mothers all across the world that that felt your pain in that moment. How did you deal with that? You know, it's, I sat still, I'd say for a year. Because I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I had to honor him. That's all. Because I was like, that can't be the end of his legacy. Yeah. He had a lot he was going to do. Kyle was an actor. He could sing. He wanted to be on Nickelodeon. He had all these things he had, <clears throat> excuse me, as dreams. So I had to figure out how to make some of these things come to fruition. So now I have an animated series that I'm working on. Um, I would like to have it go huge, viral, yeah. and, you know, have it come to Get fruition. picked up by some network or something. That would be nice because I've yeah. already got the groundwork. I got the characters built. They're beautiful, beautiful, vibrant characters. Look just like him. Um, the children's book will be ready in December. So I have things I'm doing. Obviously, I'm fighting against the lake, or some would say I'm fighting for the lake because it needs to be better. Yeah. So I want to make it a better place. I'm not trying to get rid of the lake. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm just trying to. And guess what? They're saying nothing's wrong with the lake. That's what the locals. If there's nothing wrong with the lake, then you you lose nothing in cleaning it to make the mom just be quiet, right? What? That's a good point. It should be quick. It's so a quick cleanup. Right. If there's nothing wrong with the lake, then just clean it then. That's a good point. All the bodies and the people that have been lost, what do they lose by doing what I'm asking? Were you able to recover the body? Of my son? Yeah. Oh, you know, he was, he, no, 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 no. He had a, a TBI. He okay. was hit by a jet ski and he had a head injury. So he didn't recover from that. Of course. Oh, no. I, yeah. I sat with my son for two weeks in the hospital. Two weeks. Yes, absolutely. He was in a coma and his heart, and I said, doctors, do not pull anything, do not touch anything. And the rumor was they pulled the plug. That was not something I would do. I don't think I give pull yeah. the plug vibes, do I? Nah. No, I would have been it's straight like, it's John like, Q it's in like, there. It's like you'll pull the plug on the doctors. I put a <laughs> plug on the whole establishment. The building would have fell. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. So he... um. His heart, I said, you have to give him natural. Because my thought is, when I found out I was pregnant, I didn't see brain waves. I heard a heartbeat. I heard a heartbeat. That's the first sign of pregnancy for me. So as long as his heart was beating as strongly as it was, we weren't pulling any. There was nothing going to be changed, you know. In fact, I fought doctors because they weren't even feeding him, like, intravenously. They weren't yeah. doing anything. Yeah. And I fought and fought and got him food and got them, you know, starting to give him um, nutrition and vitamins and stuff. But his heart eventually stopped. Mm. So he had to make a decision whether he was going to come back to us or whether he was going to cross. Or he probably crossed over and saw it was much better. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. What was the process of going through that? They say you'll never fully 
heal from a loss of a child. But yeah. how did you manage to pick yourself up and not totally just lose your mind in that situation? I don't know that I didn't lose my mind. You know you what I like mean? You lost some pieces of it, huh? Definitely. I lost pieces of my heart. I lost pieces of my, definitely part, probably parts of my mind. But I, I have the wherewithal that I knew I had to be strong and I had to still stand for my other children. Yeah. That's why the book is called Here I Stand. You see? Yeah. Yeah. You see why I'm standing. Yeah. That title just was catchy and I couldn't think of anything else. Yeah. But I'm still standing. And yeah. I'm in a beautiful state. Ah, <sighs> Tamika Foster Raymond. When you look at your future, when you look at your life, what do you have going on? You got the animated series. You got the book that came out. Um, what about your love life? What is that looking like these days? And I have Eli Kish, my clothing line. Eli Kish. Eli Kish, which is Kyle Ishmael backwards. Eli Kish. So it's a, it's a, what, what is it? It's like comfortable. It's like comfy, cozy clothing, like loungewear. You can run through the airport in it. Is it unisex? No. Well, it, well. <laughs> you live in Atlanta. Um, <laughs> so, so. Oh, Jesus. So it's, it's for I women? It. it, it was meant, it was targeting females. Okay. Women. Yes. But you know, Isn't that funny how you guys just dance around with it? It's, it's a female yeah, clothing line. I know it's so hard. Now I don't know what to say. We don't want to get canceled. I'm like, Lord. I, it was meant. It was meant for it women. It was meant for me. People like me, but then you thought I was a guy. So we don't know. I don't know who it's for. It's just it's clothes that fit nice. I can't even describe my clothes. This is shame. This is the world we What you say? It's meant for me, but y'all think I look like a man. But I'm a guy, so I don't know what's meant for people like me. <laughs> Lord, people with my sensibility of <laughs> physical formality, I don't know what works to you. <laughs> oh, shit. I got natural body parts. I don't know. <laughs> people like me. Are people similar? I don't know, I don't know what to say. You know, it's a touchy world. So it's a, lo it's a lounge word. It's comfy. A, it's like comfy, cozy stuff. <clears throat> but I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the Eli. Pieces, which are your sweats <laughs> and your athleisure. Yeah. That's that's coming soon. Um, the line is really, really nice. <laughs> when All that sustainable come out? fabrics. We're made in America. It's it's out. It's out. My line okay, is elikish.com. Good. A hundred percent. You are good. <laughs> yes. I don't know what to do for the next photo shoot. I just gotta put everybody on there. Just <laughs> I don't know what to do. This <laughs> world is let me just tell y'all something. Let me say this to the camera. Listen. I don't want to offend a soul. I just don't know what to say. I just, <laughs> it's such a touchy subject. You offend people so easily I nowadays. You cannot do anything. That's the other thing I don't like about this new world. The world I'm from, you first of all, y'all would have canceled my grandmother and mama and everything. They can't rest their souls. Y'all they canceled themselves. They passed away. Because they would have been canceled off earth. If you had heard my grandmother talk about everybody, every nationality, every race. Yeah, yeah. She'd be like, Orientals, that yeah. ain't right. That's they wrong. Not Orientals. That's, that's Asian. <laughs> I had to relearn conversation in the world. I'm telling you, so that's part of my problem. I don't say the right stuff because I was raised by people that didn't say the right stuff. So let me just calmly say that I made my clothing line Eli Kish for people with whatever I have that's similar to me. I don't even know if I'm called a woman no more. They say I can't say that. I made it for cis women. I don't know. She I don't said, know. She says cis women. Here. I don't know. How about that? But yeah. I made clothes. Just go, just go to the site. Whoever mm -hmm. want it, get it. Go I'll by. send it to you. I don't care what your name is. It's coming. <laughs> How about that? You don't care about what pronoun you go no, by. No, it's covered. It. It's covered. It. If it fits, please wear it, post it, tag me. Tag, share, <laughs> like. That's all I got. So Tamika, what's next for me? Tamika. Uh, what's wrong with you? I'm crazy. Tamika. They said it too. That's another thing. <laughs> I'm probably crazy. <laughs> They, they told me. So so we got to address this because we talked about this. They said that they felt like because you're an older woman yes. that you were at, you manipulated this man into marrying you. Go ahead and address that. Because you I said that to me. about him no more. Well, just say that one statement because you said it on the phone. I was like, that makes all the sense in the world. That's stupid. You know what I'm saying? It's like people think that you have some power to you change somebody. You can't manipulate no man with that person's discipline <laughs> and mindset with that career, with that 
Exactly. He's a very, very sure and smart person. So and that's why I said I want you to address I that because people be thinking. Anybody. So when we talk about age, what's the age range you 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 you'll date? I love being older. I like to say that again. <laughs> For anyone who cares. <laughs> but I'd probably go a little younger. I would date a person in their 40s. Okay. I mean, I married someone in their 40s. Yeah. You know, he is. But I would date a man now, no younger than my ex-husband is, and probably no older than, I don't know. Like, <laughs> again, I'm getting canceled again. <laughs> No older than like can, 60, I would say. So about 60. It, it's not even about the age. It's, it's about, about the, the spirit. Yeah. yeah, they got to have a spirit. They can't talk real slow. They can't walk real slow. They got to have a little pep in their step. and Because you see, I'm kind of energetic. Yeah. So I, although I'm older, I don't think I skew grandma. You know what I mean? And he can't skew grandpa. Because then that don't match. Your yin, energy. Yin to my yang. Yeah, it's got to be. He's got to be cool. Funny. So you said age range anywhere from, are you open about your age? Yeah. You 52? Yes, I'm 52. And uh, so you said around what, 45? Youngest? That's the youngest because they can't be near my kids' ages. Your kids' 30s. I know, but I just don't want to go anywhere in that whole ballpark. I don't even want to be nowhere near. I cannot have my son and my man standing together and it's a confusing. No. So no. I want somebody older, much older than my son. And um, so forty five to sixty. Yeah, forty five <laughs> and sixty, sixty two ish. Stop, no, cut off, cut off. So only because I think they become a little bit more too seasoned. You just too much seasoning. Such things too much seasoning in your food. <laughs> you can over season stuff. <laughs> I ain't got no sense. And I'm hot. Forget what you say? Water. Man, crazy. Why are you laughing? See? You know what I'm talking about? It's, it, it can be too too much seasoning. It can. It can. It can. So if it's a youthful 70-year-old? Then that's silly, probably. You see what I'm saying? Now you looking goofy. You going to come up with damn cross colors on. I'm going to be like, now see? Now you tripping. <laughs> I can't. Because I want you to be grandpa. Go sit down and rest, read the Reader's Digest, whatever you do. Now, that's not for me either. <laughs> oh, God. My <laughs> sister's the same way. My sister is seven years older, oh, and God. she don't want nobody old either. She be like, I don't want to know about my money. Okay? <laughs> she be like, no, I'm good. I'm telling you. Because we, we have a, we, we, number one, we're, we're both uh, armchair comedians. My sister and I, we love hip hop and rap lyrics. We know all the words to all the songs. <laughs> we we're pop culture, yeah. you know, intensive. So you gotta have a person that you have like characteristics. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Where somebody be like, play some Jay Z, and we both be like, ah, yeah. we at the concert together. Can't nobody like stand there like, is he still married to Taylor Swift? I can't have a guy who doesn't know. Who Jay is? If you don't know who Jay is, we can't go together. We can't go together. If you ain't into Jay Z. Break up with me ahead of time. Lose my number, okay? Okay. Then break with you ahead of time. It's over before we even get started. You gotta know. You gotta do, no. Yeah. Do you desire a marriage again? I would like a life partner. Okay, so that's a no. No, that's not really. Well, yeah, we start re we start redefining what, what what I just said. I said you want a husband. You said life partner. How many times have you been married? Twice. Twice. The first time, how many years were you married? Uh, seven. And that was back in Oakland. No, that was in uh, in Atlanta. My in first Atlanta. Husband. Yeah. So you was married in Atlanta for how many years? Uh, seven years. Seven. But I was with him like five years before. So I was probably with him like ten or twelve years. And why did you say you want a life partner versus a husband this last time around? Because I think that when you marry people, there's so much expectation. I say just stay happy. If you're happy and everything's going well, don't rock the boat. Because when you get married, you expect them to be everything perfect. 
You expect him to be like the man on the cake. You know what I mean? You want all those. The wedding topper. The wedding topper. You want him to come home at a certain time and you expect him to take the trash out all the time and go discipline the kids and go. You want all these perfection, these, these, these weird ideas of perfection. But when he's your boyfriend or your significant other or your life partner, I think the expectations are a little more realistic. But I do want a person to do life with. So why can't we bring realistic expectations into our marriage? You don't believe that that's an opportunity to say, hey, listen, let's redefine what marriage looks like. We've been taught that marriage is this perfect thing, yeah. but I want you to be able to be as transparent as possible. I'm going to be as transparent as possible, and we're going to shape what our marriage looks like. Will he be okay with sleeping with my laundry on the bed sometimes? Yes. Okay, then, yeah. Like, fuck marry somebody. Because <laughs> that's what he, he going to have to accept. <laughs> The fact that everything ain't going to be hung up on my bed all the time. It's going to be clean. I'm not nasty. I'm not dirty in any form or fashion. In fact, I'm a germaphobe. But the clothes might not get folded. But see, and I like that. So that's what I mean by when people are able to accept each other's flaws and all. You say, hey, listen, because he may say, you know what? I know you're tired. I'm going to fold them up. You know and what I'm that's saying? That's what I'm talking that's about. That's what I'm thinking marriage marriage should be like that. It's but I not, think when I was married in the past, it was, the expectation was really, that was hard for me. Like, you want me to, I got to keep my look together. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a mom. I'm doing all this different stuff, and I'm a stylist. and I'm. But then I have to be perfect in that kind of way. That was a lot of pressure. So now I kind of like that. I just sleep with all my clothes. I just ball them up and make a good little... <laughs> Mm. If it's a, and don't let it be a good talent. I just throw that over the whole thing, make a mountain of a nice. I'll be like, yep. And then I'll fold it. No, no, no. What I'll do is I'll go take it back to the dryer, warm it up so to get the wrinkles out. And then and I'll be like, let's let's try this again. Let's try it again. We live to and see it's down there a day. couple of days. But that's that's what I'm saying though. It's that. That's what I believe marriage should be about. Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head if those conversations aren't discussed. And if you look back at the Tamika back then, oh, yeah. you said you were um, uh, you had so many insecurities, and so the version of you back then isn't the same well, version wait, of you wait, now. Wait. Let's correction. I didn't have so many insecurities. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold. What how you mean, got? How, how many insecurities you have? Hold, Three, you four, got? a couple. It wasn't all so many. Oh, I knew I was fly. I knew <laughs> I had good style. I knew I had. It's a Christian show. No, that's but saying, I knew I was a good girl in some ways. <laughs> You knew you, you knew you had what to make. I had talents. I knew I made good spaghetti and stuff like that. I just wasn't sure about some things on my stomach area. I wasn't quite sure about those. No, I'm talking about all the all the little nagging and maybe the question, the insecurity. That's where insecurity come out. That's when just because you got disrespectful women. You got women who don't care that you married. You got women who didn't under respect the boundaries of, you know, of the institution. Would you marry another celebrity? Well, you I, don't want to get married anyway. Would you do life with a, a another celebrity? I don't think so. That was rough. That, that, I don't know if I'm cut out. Like, I don't even know if I'd be married now. Like, based on, like, my ex-husband is now doing shows, you know. And yeah. They're very... We'd be divorced right now over that stuff. Why? Because I can't handle it. <laughs> oh, you talking about when he's singing, when he's singing, when he's singing to other women on the stage or whatever? That would be uncomfortable for you. I ain't a fan. Probably I don't know. I just don't know. So you wouldn't look at it as like, "Well, you coming home with me?" I mean, that's the way. That's one. That's one approach. <laughs> <laughs> I have my girls in the back, like, get the bats ready. She coming that way. <laughs> you said that's one approach. That's one approach. He coming home with me. I mean, so how much is that? So a lot of people, and that's what I'm saying. We got to break this thing down. A lot of people look at it like mm-hmm. um, they want these celebrities, but they. It's almost like saying you want a doctor, but you marry a gynecologist, but you don't want them looking at vaginas all day. That's you know rough. What I'm saying? That'd be rough too. That's, that's <laughs> another rough one. That's another one. I don't know. I don't know. It ain't gonna work out. Because it ain't work out. I know me. I know what I'm willing to deal with. And certain things ain't for me. They just not really for me. So did you find that out, hindsight being 2020? I, I found that out just recently. I lo- I was like, I wouldn't be able to do some of that. But, uh, I'm not her. So in your mind, you're, you're a type of woman that you say, hey, listen. So you want, so would you be more satisfied with, you know, 
an average guy that's not in the limelight like that'd that. That'd probably be good. That's probably what I need. So, but I do want... Now, listen, I'm not okay with a guy that don't have no Poppington to him. <laughs> he has to have some... Poppington? He got to have a little Poppington to him. Yeah, I need somebody that is good looking and, and women in his job or somebody like... I don't mind him being hot. <laughs> He just can't be too hot. Like, there's levels to this. I've got to turn it down like a little bit. I'm just saying for me. I'm just talking about for me. We that talk about me. you. That's who we you talking to. You can be good for everybody else. I'm just talking about for me. So would you want a guy that has a whole lot of social media followings where, I don't mind. where people DMing him all the time? Is that okay? Nah, what are we DMing him about? Hey, yeah, hey, no, I don't care about he that. Say I, don't, I don't care about that. I don't care about I don't. I really don't care about much until you start touching my human. <laughs> Relax your mind. Let your conscience be free. I'm not the one. She's not her. I'm not the one. I'm not the two. You said touching my human. <laughs> Don't touch my human now. You can look all you want. You can DM all you want. You can send smoke signals. Do whatever you do. Can I send nudes? That's almost touching my human. That's, <laughs> that's along the lines of touching my human. Tamika, you a type, you swing on somebody? <laughs> you swing on somebody, Tamika. <laughs> I told you I've been delivered. <laughs> Don't bring. I've been working on myself. Your girl just ran out laughing. She, said, she must know where the bodies are buried. <laughs> I've changed, y'all. You changed? Let me say this. Oakland? Man, out of the town business is watered down. I'm more of a community girl. I'm not into the town anymore. No, but honestly. It's more of a community girl. I've changed. No, I've changed because... The old me, definitely. Yeah. Keep them heads ringing. But <laughs> I've changed. i really changed. No, honestly, because you have to remember. See, I can't even do this with you. I quit. <laughs> I'm done. This is crazy. You're a fool. No, you changed. How you changed, Mika? How you changed? Because I'm not putting my hands on them. Number one, these are natural nails. <laughs> I'm not about to break my nails fighting any. Fighting? Yeah. I don't, I can't, I don't want, I you break my jewelry, anything. I don't fight. I don't got time to fight. You've been delivered. But I will hire somebody to get your ass. <laughs> I do know people. I will call my cousins about your ass. Though. I will, excuse me, about your butt. <laughs> so you oh, said you know you at this stage in your life where yes. it's a certain type of guy. You change. You see how Yeah, you change. Like, you all dignified. You all dressed up. But for real, can you imagine me, first of all... <laughs> I can't do no kind of fighting, nothing that I wear these days. I don't wear clothes for fighting. I don't, they're not comfortable enough. I'm old. My knees aren't the best. So I'm not, I know my limitations. I don't have time to be fighting anybody. I'm not going to fight. But I think there are levels of respect that need to be given. You know what I mean? Once you know, and I, you know, when I been married, people knew that I was married. So it wasn't like a con fusion about right you know so yeah respect is really i'm big on that i, I can see that mm -hmm. i feel that in my spirit <laughs> that, that you, don't, you don't play with disrespect not too well not and too well. so do you feel hopeful out here in these dating streets do you feel like your person is out there you've you've been married twice a lot of women haven't even been married one time uh, you've been married uh even your first husband i heard that that was somebody that was highly sought after in his own right. Hmm. Uh, they didn't show it because they would have got it because that's when I was still crazy. <laughs> they did well hiding that one. No, he's amazing. My first <laughs> my first husband was very successful. She said, mm. Mm. I'm like, huh. But he was my boyfriend in high school. He was my boyfriend in high school. Um, we had two beautiful children. Um, and he's amazing. He's really handsome, really successful. Like, I know how to pick what I, I know. So what's the secret to make these women want to know what's the secret. I don't know. No, you know. Ask them. You, you, ain't, you ain't become 52 and don't know nothing. You know what you're doing. What you doing, Tamika? They didn't hire me for my cooking. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> well, there it is. I said hire me. <laughs> That's what it is. Work being married. See, my mother says, you get hired. <laughs> I don't know. They didn't marry me for my cooking. So you want to, so you want, uh, so been married twice and, and what you say you want really in your heart is a life partner. And that's not because it's fear of marriage anymore. You just saying yeah, that I'm you. I'm not afraid of marriage. I'm not afraid said, of anything. You just want a life partner. Yeah, 
might want a life partner, just somebody to be happy with, someone to travel. Like, I like to travel. It's, a, it's really big for me. Um, I like to go and see different parts of Italy, or I want, and I love Caribbean waters. So, um, you know, I might want to go to St. Barth for a few days, but I need a person that's willing to do that and able to do that. I was know? about to ask you, so is it, are you only attracted to guys on a certain income? Now, that's probably a fact. But you know what? I, <laughs> <laughs> you might got me there. No. <laughs> and they're going to say I'm shallow. See, I'm, I'm getting canceled. No, they, no the women, no, they, they own you. They, they, they with you on that I'm one. Canceled. No, they with, you. They <laughs> with you on get, that one. And I don't care. <laughs> Jimmy Crackhorn, and I don't care. No, 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 no. It's not, they don't have to be rich or super wealthy. Like that, that is like silly. But. They do need to have their own because there's, I just respect it. Yeah. Because here's how it is. I respect a man that has figured it out enough. Yeah. Right? He's he's put his ducks in a row, made proper investments, has planned out his life. That's I respect that. So yeah. that's if you just over there broke and can't pay attention, yeah. then I don't respect that. I don't yeah. respect that you your life's decisions made that happen. Now I'm not saying that life won't happen. Yeah. I've been definitely Broke more times than rich. Yep. That's for sure. I've gone through a lot. But I'm always on working not to be. It's yeah. a te- I want it very temporary. Yeah. You know what I mean? I might go through broke moments. Me too. But I'm up. Yeah. I'm up more than I'm down, you know? And so, and I need a person who has that same mindset. And they got to be able to figure it out. Just like I have to figure it out. Do it scared. Figure it out. But for a guy to just be broke and, and still get my phone number... He's not prioritizing what's supposed to be happening for him. He said, and still getting my phone number. Now, you shouldn't, them the wrong numbers you need to be working on. (laughs) Those are the wrong digits. You need to figure out why your other digits ain't as long as my phone number, you know, sir? Okay. Now, (laughs) there's like so. Tamika. I ain't got no sense. You got me here being silly. Tamika, what's wrong with you? You have me in here being silly. Tamika, what's wrong with you? This man has me being silly. Did you say the wrong numbers? He got the wrong numbers on his mind. (laughs) <laughs> Cause my number ain't what you need, sir. You know we talk about you want to go on trips and all that and right. St. bars and all that. So got the it, wrong numbers. You gotta get the other numbers together before you get my number, <laughs> sir. Yeah, no. So Tamika, when you think of age, okay. What about in the reverse for males? Do you believe that males have more of a a leeway on? Um, I had a guest on last week who's 52 years old, said that he wants to marry a woman that's 25 to 32. That's what they want. I know. Guys are really delusional about that. <laughs> what you say? I wish I had a bit. Where he at? Let's call him up. What are you going to talk to her about? I don't hmm. know. I guess he feel like he could, he could talk to her about something. I mean, there are there is something you can talk to her about, <laughs> but what are you conversing about? What do you? How can you relate to when you guys were younger? Well, how you're not. You, that's whack. Then they, they'll they'll start from today. I look at these celebrity women. They have men that are like 25 years younger, or they like just holding hands with a little boy. What do I? What, I'd be so embarrassed. I'd be like, oh my god, I'm going to hell for this. It wouldn't even feel right. Oh no. I, so so what That's somebody's so, baby? I can't. Do so it. so what do you think is a is a when we talk about the age factor from a male? Men younger than what? What what's the youngest? I think I mean if a man has a woman ten years younger, that's not terrible. But when it gets into those crazy numbers, fifteen years younger, twenty years younger, you guys do not relate. You're talking about your AARP card. You know what I'm saying? And she's talking about her cash card, cash app card, whatever they got. I don't know. Whatever the girls be, Venmo card or something. I don't know. They're not talking about the same things. So you tell They want their last punch card done. You talking about your A. Y'all just not the same. So you say a guy that's 45 should date what? The youngest. 45. He could do 35. Only 10. Maybe 10. But if he really, I mean, it depends on what he wants from her. If he's just trying to have fun. Then of course. No, Mary. We're talking about a serious, oh, Mary? intentional. Man. I mean, but see, there are women with old souls. No, yes. Because me at 35, I was super mature. I was at the top of my game, like as far as styling, and I probably had the most money then. I was I made more money styling than a lot of people. You know yeah. what I mean? So I So can't, take you into consideration. I'll so take, if, okay. when you when you were 35, <clears throat> what based upon your mindset? Mm-hmm. 
what how old of a guy would you attract? I mean, guys of all ages have always, you know, tried young and older have always tried to talk to me, but I was married. I've been married so long. I was married in my 30s. I was married all of those years. Oh, really? Yeah, I got married on my 30th birthday, I believe. Yeah. Your last marriage? You were th- Yes. You- my first marriage, I got married on my 30th birthday. Wow. And then I got divorced and I got married the same year. You got married the same year you got divorced. Yeah. Look at you. Look, why are your eyes bouncing around? Because I know they ain't going to add up. But <laughs> I know <laughs> what had happened was. <laughs> I know, I said, I was like, ooh, time to wrap this podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the credits, please. <laughs> my flight. <laughs> my flight about to leave. <laughs> no, 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 to be fair. Hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Kevin Hart, let me explain. <laughs> let me explain. <laughs> no, I was separated, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I had been separated for a couple years. Right. It wasn't, I wasn't like leaving one house and <laughs> Well, open the door. I'm on my way. <laughs> open the garage. Here I come. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got divorced. I got divorced, and I got married the year that my divorce was finalized. Right. But I had been separated for two years. I got separated in 2005. I got married in 2007. That was another misconception. People thought that I went straight from one to the other, and I just <laughs> left one. for. And it, none of that is what happened. 2005, I bought my own house separate from my first husband. 2007, I got married and had my son. So it's not the same year, but my divorce was finalized. Yeah. You know, it takes a while. Yeah, of course. Through the logistics and the who gets what and da 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 whatever, negotiations. And that took a while. Yeah, so. You you must got, I, I, now I'm trying to figure you out. Mm-mm. You must got, you must got a little game. Because it's like, like, you... Game? Yeah, like not not like game as in game. the negative sense. I don't like cougar and I don't like the word game. Well, not because it not seems negative. like you're a slickster or no, you're trying to get that. over. I hate it. No, oh. okay, let, we we don't use your word skills. You got skills. That's what you said earlier, right? You got I skills. I don't think I called it skills. I you, don't you said, like you none said of skills. Them Give me a word. I don't know if I like skills either. <laughs> what word? Skills. Give me. Skills sounds like a promiscuous word. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that applies to me. Uh, I don't like think it's a respectful you have talents. word. Did you say talents? Oh God, that's the long with skill. <laughs> I'm a I'm a fun loving person. Why do people Why do people fall in love with you? I have, and pers- I use the word love loosely. Yeah, I, but, no, but no, in general, that could be love. Yeah, any relationship, right? right. Friends, right? Uh, romantically, whatever. I think I just got a personality. I got a good personality. I'm kind of fun to be around. I'm kind of life of the party. Uh, it's hard to talk about yourself. You know what I mean? But but it's, think, some, it's something that I makes... I think I do all right in some areas of my life. Because it's something about you that, that, that like I said, you've been married twice. You were married to two successful men. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> That's a word you don't learn. That's a word I've been told. <laughs> Period. Ooh. Period. Poo. Period. Poo. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Google it. <laughs> My picture gonna be in there like. <laughs> Tamika. So as you do, you feel hopeful out here. As we wrap this up, do you feel hopeful that you could get that that? Um... I'm hopeful that people will order my book. <laughs> I'm hopeful that they order my audio book where I am narrating all the stories in my book. I'm hopeful that the Grammy committee nominates me for a Grammy because I'm now being considered. For the audio for the audio for book. For the audio book. So download Here I Stand audio book on Apple Books, uh, Audible. This is available on Amazon or on TamikaRaymond.com. I'm hopeful that people will get into my story, understand who I am, how I think, that you might learn something about my je ne sais quoi. Um, cause I do talk about it a little bit. I'm modest though. I, that's weird. <laughs> talk about that kind of stuff. But well, as it is, when we wrap up, what is one of the things that you hope people take away from this book? I hope that they learn that they can make it and see the other side. I hope that they learn not to major in the minors. I hope that they learn to remain in a beautiful state. Life will happen to you, but yeah. you can choose to suffer or you can choose to move on and remain in a beautiful state because life is really beautiful, even despite the pitfalls and the issues. Tamika, 
Foster Raymond. I enjoyed having you today. I thank enjoyed you. laughing with you. Uh, listen, thank you so much for blessing the yellow couch with your authenticity, your vulnerability, your transparency. My hair didn't fall your off. Your hair didn't fall off behind the couch. So great job <laughs> on that. <laughs> so listen, uh, make sure that y'all go pick up this book, Here I Stand. Um, it, it's amazing. I love it when I get transparent people who are vulnerable and can share their truths unapologetically. And so it's been an honor to talk to you because, you know, we we get a snapshot of who someone else, well, who someone is without really getting an opportunity to talk to them. And so even back then, I was never the type that was passing judgment. I don't get caught in all this stuff. I just be like. You're right. She did a little ugly. Not no, totally. No, ugly. I said that's above my pay grade. I said, ain't got nothing to do with me. That's you know? really smart. Like, I look at people, I be like, listen, they ain't got, because at the end of the day, I don't want nobody picking apart my woman. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really big mm -hmm. about that. It's like, you don't have a say so on who I choose to love. And you'll never fully understand why somebody loves somebody else. Like, you can go look at two, uh, two people together. You be like, how did he get her? Or how did she get him? You don't have no idea about how they're tethered to each other from a heart standpoint. You don't know what that person was going through the day that they met that person. That person was an nice answer though prayer. If people compliment each other a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice. But at the end of the day, you find the most complimentary people that look great together, but they hate each other. The facts. They can't stand each other. You find the most beautiful couple, especially in Hollywood. You're like, oh, they're so beautiful couples go, and they hate each other. That's like, right. Like, we just found out that Will Smith and Jada, they, they, they've been living separate for all these years. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Well, that's what Jada says. So at the end of the day, so know. at the end of the day, she's speaking on her marriage and saying this is what it was. But for years, everybody kept saying couples goals. That's reason I don't look at couples and say they're a goal. I mm. am my own couples goals. I'm my own Because goal. I want to show up as authentic as I can be with the person that God joined me with and we do life together on the highest level. Period. Agreed. Pick up the book, Here I Stand, uh, Amazon, or you can go to, you said TamikaFoster.com? Tamika what? Foster Raymond? Tamika Raymond. See, I, sometimes you use Foster, sometimes you don't. So TamikaRaymond.com. I had to listen. Yeah, I know. You, yeah. you took Foster. And it, okay, all right. It's too long. It was too long to make it the website. Like, it was just like Tamika Foster. And people were like, that's too much typing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just made it simple. Go to TamikaRaymond.com, pick up the book, or Amazon, everywhere you pick up your uh, favorite books. She also has a podcast called Here I Stand. Here I Stand. She has a podcast. We and, talk about um, life. Hopefully, uh, you know, I find myself worthy enough for her to come uh, on. be on her Please podcast. Come on. We'd you love know, to have you on the you couch. Know, you know, I'm, a, I'm begging for my, my my place to sit down on the Here I Stand podcast. You know, so there it is. Listen, y'all give it up <laughs> for my new homie, Tamika Raymond. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. 
Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Well, 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 listen, man, have y'all been having fun during this season? I know a lot of y'all, um, I don't know. I think some of y'all are more accustomed to the normal stories that we have. But the reason why I'm so intentional about doing these tough topics is so that we can go deeper. I don't want just surface conversations. I want to go deeper. I want to have those tough topics for a reason so that we can understand what we really run into in these dating streets or even in our own marriages. Uh, it's those tough topics that cause divorce. It's those tough topics that cause a breakup. It's those tough topics that make you not able to get over the hump and get to a commitment with that person because we're all avoiding those tough topics. So I'm telling you, rock with me. I'm going to lead you to the right direction. Let's hear these conversations. Let's find out um, what a successful relationship looks like. Uh, what are some of the conversations that we should have on the onset in order to help that relationship thrive or give that relationship a better chance at survival? And so that's what we're going to keep on doing. So thank y'all so much. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, my heart palpitates when I think about our hearts being tethered together. My mind escapes to us laughing during the times the enemy tried to destroy us. We will safeguard our minds, spirit, and bodies from the attacks from social media, marriage haters, and even family members who speak negative about our union. We will conquer everything life throws at us. We will overcome. I love you so much. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit. Live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.